Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. To newer members, I would like to recommend that you use playlists on the Master's Voice because that is the best way for you to get through a lot of information in a shorter amount of time. The Master's Voice Prophecy blog has helpful playlists on the dashboard and there you can find information organized by theme and if you simply start from the oldest video, when you go to the playlist, you click the playlist that you want and it's going to list all the videos. And then you'll see filters where it says you can watch the videos from newest to oldest. You can watch them from oldest to newest. If you choose to watch the videos in a playlist from the oldest video to the newest video, by the end of watching those videos, you will have come fully up to date with what the Lord God is saying about that particular topic. The most important playlist on the master's voice is the Russia and the China playlist. There are about at least 20 videos there. And I think there should be a few new ones that I have to add there. There should be about 20 videos there and more on the blog itself. There's the repentance playlist. I cannot stress how important Repentance is for every man, woman, and child in the world at this time. We have come to the ends of times. I am not a date setter here, so I'm not telling you that it's tomorrow or next week, but you would have to be willfully blind and also defiant against what you can see happening outside to tell yourself that we have not come into a patently different time period for human beings. There's also the sin series. This is where God has listed all the things that he says are sin. And he uses the nation of America listing out extremely egregious sins, listing out sins that quite a few people have never heard in their life that God says are sin. It does not matter what personal opinions people have. What matters is what does the Bible say and how does God express himself in the modern era to make people who are living outside of his laws, outside of his rules, and outside of alignment with his spirit to make them come back to center and begin to walk in observance of what God calls holiness, what God calls righteousness, what God calls works that are worthy of salvation. If you are saved and you are expecting heaven and you are living like the devil, you are in a dichotomy, two separate worlds that don't match, which means there is deception in your life. And it is time to allow the Holy Spirit to heal that deception because there will be extremely high prices to pay for walking and living in sin as we go forward. God has already said that we have entered the time of instant judgment, whiplash judgment. You go and touch sin. You go and continue in sin. You keep asking questions and thinking, well, I want to have an academic discussion about this. I've been watching the videos and the videos are convicting me and I feel bad, but I think I'm just going to reach out to her and just ask her. I heard her say with examples that this is sin, but I think I just want to ask is the one that I'm doing sin because I'm doing it that way. I'm not going to get myself involved in things like that. If you have a heart that is so hard that you come to this channel and you hear teaching, preaching, and exhortation on what God says is unacceptable to him. You hear it, it goes in and your heart is convicted, but now you do not allow the work of conviction to complete itself so that you can repent of sin. And you now want to have further conversations to ask the obvious that you already heard then you have to know that the person who is going to be responding to you is not me. You can, con simply, you can simply continue on the way of iniquity. And at the end of iniquity, you will find the end that defiant people find when they want to keep walking in sin after they have heard the warning of the watchman to step away from that evil and to allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse them, the blood of Jesus to wash them, confession of sin, and then submitting all of your life to God so that he can not only be your savior, but also your Lord. Many people live in a double universe. Yes, they say Jesus Christ is their savior, but he is not their Lord. He, they don't follow his commandments. They don't obey what he says. They obey what their flesh wants. And then they think that they can have their cake of salvation and also eat it too when it comes to entry into the Lord's rest. These things also are deception. And so 
If you are a new person, I pray that you will understand that reading, research, testing the spirits are your responsibility. On the master's voice, I'm not responsible to give the prophecies and then try to convince you that they are true. I am not interested in that. I am zealous that God's words be heard by as many people as possible. I thank God for the work that he has done so far to bring people. He is speaking. If you are minded to listen, the Holy Spirit will enter into your heart and do the kind of work that saves. And so today's prophecy is continuing in the vein of punishment for sin and captivity. And before I go any further to give the title of this video or when it was received, the message that the Lord had, for if he does have a message before I make the video, he will always tell me, the Lord said, tell them that the reason I am judging them is because they are sinful. Because I noticed that many people are getting stuck in their soul searching. Many people are getting stuck. They're getting stuck in the world of why, which I discussed all the way back in 2020 and 2021, saying that if you listen to prophecy and the only response you have is why, 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 it's evident that you don't read your Bible. There's no way that you can read the Bible and see that America has almost duplicated every single sin that Israel committed in the Bible and invented quite a few new ones that those people were not able to walk in due to the fact that they did not have technology and stuff like that. There's no way that you can see all the sins of the Bible replicated in this one nation and then still try to act innocent and confused and say, but why is he judging us? God says that he is judging America because America is grossly sinful. This is sin above the norm. This is sin that exceeds what everybody else is doing. So to all the people who constantly will ask, but so-and-so did it and this country did it, you need to be able to carry your thoughts to the logical conclusion. There are 10 people and they all sin the same sin and God only comes and selects one person that means that God is privy to information about that person that may not be openly apparent to everyone in the group of 10. It means that God actually knows that in the commission of 10, maybe four did it and would never do it again when chastised. And maybe four more did it and they knew that it was sin, but when they are rebuked, they will repent. And then maybe one did it because he was totally innocent and he didn't know that it was sin. But then there is one that God sees into that person's future. And God knows that if he gives 10 years or 20 or 40, the inside of that 10th person is dead, rotten, and corrupted. And no amount of mercy and grace extended as America has had extensive periods of mercy and grace, will ever change the behavior. God says he's judging America because America is wicked. He said, tell them that they have absolutely departed from what they have received. So then you ask, what has America received? America has received the fullness of God's love, the fullness of God's mercy, the fullness of God's grace, the fullness of his might, power, influence. All these things have been extended to this nation decade after decade after decade. And he is simply saying that what the country did with it is very, very unacceptable. It is wicked to have received the fullness of truth of God's word and to have departed so far from it that you have st statues of Satan standing upon the soil and you have men declaring that they are women and women insisting that they are men and children being utterly reprobate and corrupted and murder and abortion and other sins soaking the soil with blood and ancient iniquity, such as the exterminations of peoples testifying to the heavens 
and then will still come to the channel and say, but why? Today's prophecy is called the glory of the Chaldeans. And God is talking about the great humbling of America for wickedness and for pride. God is saying that he will bring the cities of this nation, which are extremely well-developed, extremely high um, skyscrapers, tall, towering buildings, what he calls the citadels of Babylon, the cities of Babylon. He is saying that he will bring it down to the ground. So I have already made two prophecies that I received on the same day, April 15, 2023. One is called the Iron Pen, and the other one is called Diaspora. This one re was received April 16, 2023, and the title is The Glory of the Chaldeans. None of these prophecies are up yet. It takes a lot of time to transcribe these things on the blog. And so I will have to find a cache of time and do that. The Glory of the Chaldeans, April 16, 2023. These are the Lord's words. America, you are the glory of pride. The glory of the Chaldeans. The height of the citadels. The cities of Babylon. Babylon has roared before me in times past. Babylon has gloried in sinfulness and excelled in pornography and adultery. But the sins of the United States of America roars in the heavens, overflowing with fornication and unbelief. They have departed from the ways of the Lord and gone after their own lusts. Therefore, let them be taken away from my face to serve their enemies in captivity and hard labor. Let them work so hard they have no strength to speak. As Pharaoh wearied my men and sorrowed my women until they could not talk, until they cursed Moses for increasing their workload, let them labor in the Philistine camps until their speech is taken away and they can only weep for the overflow of Babylon's sin that they have participated in. And so the Lord is saying here that America is the glory of pride. When you say that something is the glory of something, it means, as I just said in the earlier example of 10, that you have pride. You have the pride of Great Britain and you have the pride of the EU. You have the pride of the Japanese and the Koreans, those in Bangladesh. You have the pride of the Australians. You have the pride of the Africans. You have the pride of Canada to the north. Mexico and Nicaragua and all our neighbors to the south. But there is a particular pride that is a glory. It is as it is a covering, as you see over me here. It is as it is a height, a peak, meaning that it cannot be matched. It cannot be equaled. And the Lord has said in past prophecies that even if he were to cast his eye back across all of time, across all of history, he would not find a people as rebellious, a people as decadent, a people as impure, a people as prideful, and a people as wicked as the United States of America. The Lord has said on this channel that the sin of America supersedes, excels, and is the glory of all sin that he has ever witnessed, including the overflowing of sin in the time of Noah, which was a very epic period of sin. And so he says the glory of the Chaldeans and their heightened, glorious, soaring cities has been before him in time past. And the Chaldeans were a particular people that share when I went to do some research, a lot of similarities with the United States. Chaldea was a group of people that first started off being a group of tribes, and then they got together and they formed small independent states. So they were all separate independent states, just like we have here. But for purposes of overall governance, 
For purposes of marauding, which is going and attacking other people like pirates and taking what they have, for purposes of proper official war, where it is Chaldea versus so-and-so, Chaldea versus Assyria, and things like that, they always came together into one cohesive unit, and they worked as one even for purposes of paying tribute to stronger kings, such as the king of Assyria who once beat them, they acted as a unit. But within that unit called Chaldea, there were small independent states. The Chaldeans were also known as the Babylonians. And the most famous king from history that is matched in Bible history was Nebuchadnezzar who married Queen Esther. In that time, his empire was so big that it was 127 provinces, each with a governor in there and things like that. So it was a massive territory that spread over much of the known world. This is where these people eventually evolved to. They had amazing centers of art. They had amazing centers of libraries. They had amazing places of learning colleges in those days. They were known for wine and song and sexual immorality and a very loose and free kind of living that can only be enjoyed by people who have established what is known as hegemony. Hegemony is when you have excelled in technology, you have excelled in military might, you have excelled in strategy, whether it is political strategy, educational strategy, war strategy, agricultural strategy, you are hard to beat in every area. And so Chaldea had established hegemony to such a point that even modern scholars today do not debate that this was a great people, a great nation. They covered a very large area of ancient Mesopotamia in the, in the Persian Gulf, and they were a massive empire that even today has left a very strong imprint on many civilizations, societies, and people. And so they were known and hated for one particular thing that they would do. Chaldea had this habit of waiting until civilizations sprung up a little bit, established themselves. So they would have sons and they would have daughters and they would grow and they would build buildings and they would set up their agriculture and they would set up their limited technology, whatever they had. And when they became a flourishing society, Chaldea would go and attack them and destroy them and take what they had. I will say that again. Chaldea was known and hated in the ancient world for being a people that never let other people live in peace. They waited for societies to grow and flourish and establish themselves, and then they would go and attack with what scholars say was a very hard to beat type of military might. Just think of 127 states coming against you wherever you are coming around you like a crab and swooping down like an eagle and raking you like a bear and tearing you to pieces like a puma. They were known and hated for attacking settled communities, for waiting until they were growing and showing wealth and establishment. And then they would swoop in with that impressive army, take it, impose tribute, and carry whatever they wanted away. And in one of the old prophecies, the Lord said that the spirit of Babylon lives on in the United States, that Babylon never died from the ancient world, and that the same spirit that made those people how they were lives on today in the people of the United States. And that is why the citizens of the United States the women, the men, the children, and the successive leadership over time behave the way they do. They are influenced by the same lawless, selfish, marauder, pirate, attacking, loose, immoral, godless spirit that frustrated God in that time until he broke that empire up and divided it up to successive armies that came after them. And now he says he will do the same. He says, Babylon gloried in sinfulness and excelled in pornography and adultery. So this was a sexually loose people. They didn't have online pornography, but they used to quite allow it in open places 
just like Pompeii. Sexual expression in the ancient world, just because they didn't have TV, they were actually quite free with it. And that was one of the reasons that God really hated a lot of those tribes because God is huge on purity and morality, especially when it comes to sex. God created sex to be enjoyed in one confined marriage, only between male and female. And whenever there were societies, that were licentious, they were open, they would have temple prostitutes, they would have orgies, they would have older men with young boys, they would have older women with young girls, they would have swinging parties, sharing wives and things like that. That kind of society brings great wrath out of the heart of God. And sexual immorality was usually one of the main reasons that an ancient empire would fall and not be allowed to continue. Pornography, looking at sexual material that you should not, that excites the body to move it to commit sexual sin, adultery. In the old world, God was not only talking about sexual adultery where you would leave your wife or leave your husband to go and fornicate with someone else that you were not married to. God also means adultery whereby you leave what is righteous, you leave what is holy, you leave the laws of God to go and start doing Baha'i and Hindu and and these little people in New York that hand out these little gold cards that are always promising nirvana and other things like that. Basically, you commit adultery with other gods. You commit adultery with, in America, the gods of logic and the gods of reasoning and the gods of that doesn't make sense to me and I don't agree. And anyway, my spirit, this doesn't sit right with my spirit. The Holy Spirit will be speaking and then your spirit is telling you that the Holy Spirit is a satanic, luciferian thing. And you judge the words of God according to the limitation of your own darkened heart. These are all adultery in God's eyes. But then the Lord goes on to say that America's sin is not like Babylon's sin. He said that Babylon's sin roared before him in times past. But America's sin is roaring up to the heavens. And in many of the prophecies, I have said that when I see the Lord talking about the sin of this country, sometimes it appears like, a great rushing wave of filthy, unbelievable filthy, the kind of water that if you saw it coming, you would just shrivel because you wouldn't want it to touch you. Filthy water rushing against the whole of the nation. And sometimes I said that the smoke of this nation's sin, it appears like overwhelming black smoke that goes all the way up into the heavens until it begins to confront God in his own majesty, he is the Lord of the heavens, but the sin of one country ascends to the heavens like a column of black smoke that is very offensive to God. And so another thing that he accuses America for is overflowing with fornication, sexual immorality, masturbation, sleeping around, uh, inventing apps that you basically just go on and fish for human bodies the way fishermen go to the sea and fish for fish and also unbelief. This is saying things like there is no God, writing books in this nation that say um, that there is no God and all the atheists, some of the best and most famous atheists actually are Americans and they have conferences. I've spoken of the American atheist conferences where they all get together and they all pat one another on the back about their brand new discovery that God does not exist and they do not know that God has been the unannounced guest of honor at all the conferences from the ancient world, even the one that Pharaoh held where he invited Moses and Aaron and they were telling him, Pharaoh, repent. And God said, let my people go. And he said to them, top tier atheist unbelief, who is this God? I do not know him. And so God says that America has departed from his ways and gone after their own lusts. And therefore he says that America will be removed from his face and sent to serve enemies in captivity and hard labor. I have spoken for years about the fact that God says Russia, China, and many allies will come here. They will bomb this place. They will burn this place. They will loot this place. And they will sit and ask people, what was your profession? And what was your skill before the war? And they will look for those who can serve their agendas and purposes 
in wherever else they are working, and they will carry people captive there to work in very hard labor. Then the Lord says, let them work so hard until they have no strength to speak. I have always said that the Lord's words are that he will give to America measure for measure and pound for pound the sins that she has committed. And I have always warned that one of America's greatest problems is the inability to practice divine punctuation, which is God will say something and then God will put a full stop at the end of the sentence. And then Americans will come and turn that full stop into a comma and then they will say, but what about this and this? And I don't like that and that. And I just think that this approach is wrong. So the Lord will give his sentences and put a full stop. And then the other people who are watching from other countries will just listen and say, this is very scary. And they will say what they say. But here in the US, we will turn that full stop into a comma. And then we will continue this sentence with what we think and how we feel God should speak to us about the things that God says he has endured from the country. And God says that the kind of punishment that he will put Americans into will leave no strength for words. He says that in the ancient world, Pharaoh worked the Israelites so hard until they had no strength to talk. He worked them so hard that when Moses came to set them free from captivity and held that little tent meeting and showed them the signs that God had shown him and told them, I've come to put an end to this and we should rejoice. When Pharaoh heard about it, Pharaoh increased the workload of the Israelites and they cursed Moses because their work went from backbreaking to excruciating in weight. God says that America will be taken away to labor in camps where they will be worked so hard that speech, commentary, having an opinion, saying, why is God doing this? saying, but we're good people, but we don't deserve this. All the things that are said now that I constantly warn people, don't say these things because the Lord is listening to your words. They will be unable to say it. God says that they will only be able to weep for the overflow of the punishment of Babylon's sins that they have participated in. I will put them under judgment such as has never been seen before under the heaven. The sky has not gazed down on punishment like this. The sky will hide its face from Babylon in the day of her judgment. In one hour, in a single day, captivity, destruction, pillaging, and the fall of empire. In one hour, trampling of the young and old, death by surprise, enemy at the gates, enemy over the walls, enemy in the streets, enemy at your door. In a moment of surprise, America, what will you do? And so the Lord has said in other prophecies that the judgment that he will do here is a thing that ought not to be done. Now, if a human being says this to another human being and says, you know, um, celestial, you have done what ought not to be done. And this is just basically an earthly estimation to say this, that you did to me is something that is so grossly done that I cannot process it. How could you do this to me? But when the eternal one of all flesh is saying that the kind of punishment he will give is something that the sky has never gazed on before. This means that any punishment you wish to look at that has ever happened to any country, to, that has ever happened to any state, any, anything that you have ever seen happen to people. So if you've seen what happened to Iraq and you see what happened to Syria, or if you see what happened to the European states when Hitler was um, you know, rampaging through them in ancient history, if you see how Rome fell or you see how Jerusalem was burned, in history, or you see how God destroyed ancient Egypt in the Bible. God says that no, nothing on earth can equal the kind of punishment that he is going to give to America. 
And the reason these words will put a weight on the heart is because God intends for the heart to be weighed. God intends for the heart to feel the heaviness and the press of the weight of these words. The reason I take the time to open these prophecies up is because if you read them on the blog and you simply read a sentence and you, your eye just skims over the sentence, you may miss the fact that God is expecting his words to penetrate so that the country can come to realization of what the nation has done to God. Because until there is realization, there can be no acceptance of sin, the totality of sin, not some sin. And then I didn't do this one, or that was in the ancient past, or it was the ancestors, not us, the totality of sin. When sin is acknowledged and accepted, that is the only way that people can repent without repentance. The fullness of all that the Lord says remains. And he has already said that he will not remove this judgment. Therefore, it must mean that repentance is serving another purpose other than removing the judgment. Because the judgment cannot be removed, it must mean that repentance in this instance for America is to put the soul back in relationship with God so that that soul can now have capacity can now have right standing with God to be able to dialogue to God for that soul. It is not to remove the judgment. It is to open the door to speak with God as a man speaks to his friend and see what God will answer each soul concerning the judgment that is coming. The sky has not looked down on a punishment like this. The sky will hide its face from Babylon on the day that she's judged. In a single hour, in a single day, the Lord is speaking here to Bible scholars who can hear of Revelation chapter 18, where it says, fallen, fallen, great Babylon is fallen. She will receive all her plagues. This is everything I have ever discussed on this channel. Every single message that is titled America, involves America, is directed to America. God says, these things will come upon this country in one day. Captivity, destruction, pillaging, and the fall of empire in one hour, trampling the young and old. This is Ezekiel 9 that I have taught here at least five times. Where the judgment comes, six men were called, five of them holding axes to cut down, only one given an inkhorn to mark the foreheads of those who were lamenting and sighing over the sins that were being committed at that time. And there, I have a dream that I have shared many times, and I'm going to, excuse me, please, I'm going to share that dream again. It was the very first time that God showed me that Russia would come to America. And as the years would go by, God would open up the understanding, and there's still more to read here in this prophecy, but God would open up the understanding. In this dream, I saw that it was a very cold morning. It was a very cold morning, and I saw Russians, Russian soldiers in the street. So it wasn't a very, um, you know, multifaceted dream. I was simply standing in the street, but I wasn't really there. I was just positioned there, but not visible, you know? in the dream and Russians were here in America and they were swarming everywhere. They were swarming everywhere and they were cutting people down in the street and just killing people in the street. It didn't matter if the person was old. It didn't matter if the person was young. It didn't matter if the person was special forces or whatever. They were simply cutting people down. They were in the cities. They were in um, the residential areas. And I remember screaming to people, run, run, save yourselves, save yourselves. And they couldn't hear me. And one scene that I have discussed and I will not leave out is that I said, I saw a woman who was pregnant. She was pregnant and the Russians have this long gun and the gun has a zigzag knife at the end of it. I always forget to look up what that zigzag knife that they have stuck at the end of the rifle is. And this man stuck it into the woman's belly and simply ripped it up. 
and then pushed her off his gun and let her fall with her, her literal belly with life still in it ripped open. And I was horrified. I was crying out to people, run, run, save yourselves. And of course they could not hear me. And that was the very first time that God showed me that these people will come here. And in subsequent years, God has shown me that they are already here, that they live here. They are extremely integrated in with the population. They have been here for decades. They are embedded into the fabric of the nation. And the Lord says that they are more American than Americans. You cannot tell the difference. They are in the all the structures of government. They're in the school. They are enmeshed in society. God says that Russians are part of the Hollywood stars that you love. They're part of the musicians. They have seamlessly blended into the fabric of the nation. And it is now impossible to tell who is who because these ones don't have accents. And he said that these people will act as the Trojan horse. They will open the door for the ones who are coming. Not only that, God has said that unfaithful, unpatriotic Americans, I've been talking about this since 2020, unfaithful, unpatriotic Americans will open the door for the Russians. They will disable these nuclear things that you are supposed to press. God says that American missiles will not answer back. Russia will be bombing and then America will at least want to bomb back and it will be impossible because all these launch codes, secret codes will have been disabled. And he said that the missiles will be silent in the silos and America will be unable to respond. And so I saw that they will not show mercy there are scriptures for this. I will make a video that is exclusively the scriptures that have been going into all these prophecies and we will go through them so that it can be understood what exactly I am doing here. Death by surprise, your enemy at the gates, your enemy climbing over the walls, your enemy in the streets, your enemy at the door. These people will come to the door and they will bring people out. In a moment of surprise, America, what will you do? Your enemies will drag you down to a pit of confusion. They will overwhelm and surprise you with weapons that you have never seen before. And they will attack from all corners of the empire. They are inside the walls. They are inside the apartment buildings, inside the schools and the technical colleges, inside the universities, in your marriages the fathers and mothers of your children. They are inside you, among you, part of you. And I say that in the day they reveal themselves, your heart will melt like glass that is put in a furnace. The foreigners will come out of their hiding places. They will show themselves. They will give Russian salute, Chinese salute, they will say, here we are reporting for duty. We have persevered. We have endured. We have conquered Babylon. We have won the battle with a single blow. We are the master of territories and we have overcome. And that makes complete sense of the first sentence of this paragraph that says your enemies will drag you down to a pit of confusion. It is confusing indeed to go to university and be taught by your favorite professor, Dr. Zhang. And then on the day of captivity, the day where all will be revealed, the day that is described for this country in Isaiah 13, where it says that this is a day that strong men will become weak and that their faces will be red like flame. And everyone will look at each other in confusion. And the men will bow down like women in labor. This is why I always say to the men, you can say that you suffer, you don't suffer a woman to do this and that you don't suffer a woman to do that. And God bless you because I know what Joel 2.28 says and I know who called me, equipped me and sent me to do the work that I do. But in the day that comes when you bow down, you might be looking for this woman who is telling you these things before they come. It is confusion 
to live in the midst of your enemy, to hear God tell you that the enemies are inside the walls. Inside the walls, let's go through this methodically, means inside the borders. So we're not looking for people who are coming to the borders. Excuse me, please. We're not looking for people to approach the borders and to say, can you please stamp us in? Oh no, we're just Bar Boris and Nikolai, just uh, two brothers and we're looking for asylum or we're just two brothers and we just wanna go and visit Hawaii and then we'll come out again. Inside the walls means the business of broaching the border is a done deal. It's over. People live inside and they will make sure that the borders are accessible. That means that even the border security, the guys who watch the border, contain these people. They are inside the walls. You have people inside who will open it from inside. And then you have them coming outside with superior attacking force. And they will easily come across these borders. I used to speak in the old prophecies a lot about how God says that Russia comes here for reconnaissance in flying things that do not ping the U.S. radar. That's right. They have something on their planes and they can just fly here and be cloaked. This is not in the future. This is now. God says that they just fly across the airspace and they can't be tracked because they do something with the planes. And he was asking in that prophecy, I think it's called the heart attack. America, do you know that these people fly overhead and they watch? And do you know that these people sit in the waters offshore and they listen to your conversation? And I saw inside this Russian submarine thing, these men sitting and smoking to pass the time and simply recording conversations that they could, they could pick up off the mainland. And America was not being warned by, I guess, water security or water patrol, that these people are being picked up around the coastlands. So they can already do this. Inside the apartment buildings means they live in apartments just like everyone else. Just as I live in mine, they live in the apartments of the land. And that means that the Russians and the Chinese are your neighbors already. Schools, technical colleges, their students, they're either foreign exchange students here and they're doing PhDs and they're doing these long-term degrees or they've been living here all their lives or they're teaching at UC Berkeley and they're teaching at the University of Philadelphia and they're teaching here and they're teaching there. They are students, they are custodians and everybody loves Boris, the school principal or someone else, you know, Anastasia, their best friend from college. And maybe they just have normal names like Hannah and Anna. And so he says, they are inside your marriages. They are the fathers and the mothers of your children. And this does not definitely say that a person who is married to a Russian is automatically suspect that the Russian person, absolutely not. These people that God is talking about are people who are American. They are American. You cannot tell that they are foreign because they are as born here. He said that they have no accents. He said that they are stars in Hollywood, musicians and beloved members of the society. And that is why he said, when they step out from inside you, when they separate from among you and reveal themselves, your heart will melt like glass that has been put in a, for in a furnace. The foreigners will come out of hiding and show themselves giving the Russian salute and the China salute and say, we are reporting for duty. And when the Lord said this part, excuse me, the light is fading. When the Lord said this part, what I saw is, just a moment, please. What I saw is how it will look. So the, the outside soldiers, the external soldiers will come and say, come out of the houses, come out of the houses. You're all captured. You're all captured. You're captured, captured, captured. Come out. And then people will be forced to come outside and stand in neighborhoods or things, and they will be huddled. And the reason it will be easy for them like that is because God has always said in these prophecies that they will come at a time that nobody knows. They will come when no one is expecting it. They will come at a time, he says, when America will be bundled up and sleeping. And what I've seen in these messages is that it was cold. And he said in one old prophecy that cold is the friend of the bear. 
that Russia is not afraid of cold, but America runs and hides from cold and bundles herself up. And so those are perhaps more vulnerable times when, you know, Russian soldiers are patrolling in eight feet of snow. I don't know. But here, you know, people are not used to it. And so people tend to retreat and be indoors more. And, and that will be the kind of time that they will do it. But then it was like everyone is captured, captured, captured. And so standing together and watching expectantly to see what will happen. And then comes either some kind of command or some kind of greeting in a language that is not English. So some kind of Chinese command will be spoken. Some kind of Russian command will be spoken. And then you will just hear something like that, like the stomping of soldiers. And then you're thinking, where's that sound coming from? Because we're all here in our bathrobes. And then people begin to say, excuse me, excuse me, please, excuse me, in English. And they will come out, they will come out from among the crowd and then say back, we are here. We are reporting for duty. We have persevered. What does that mean? It means this was a long, long plan. To persevere means that you have lived through something. You have endured something. You have put up with something that was not pleasant, but you did it. You have put up with watching American movies always make Russia the evil demon snake. You have put up with the news reports that we get on Fox and CNN and MSNBC, and no one needs me to go into those and what they say in detail. You have put up with many things that pierced your Russian loyal, Chinese loyal heart. So you persevered and you hung on because you knew what this thing that God is calling enemy at the gates, enemy over the walls, surprise. You knew it was coming. So these people probably don't know that God is saying this. Maybe they do because this channel is reaching more people now. But God knows that they're here. And God is telling America that they're here. So they say, we have persevered. We have endured. Meaning we might not have want to go through this, but we went through it for the sake of the plan. We have conquered Babylon. We won the battle with a single blow. What has the Lord been saying here for four years? What has he been saying since the 2015 prophecies, 2014 prophecies on Russia and China? They will move cohesively. They will strike one blow. They will hit the East Coast and the West Coast at the same time. This is not a three-day thing. They will come from the air, from the sea, from under the water, across the borders. And then we now are hearing in detail from out in the midst, from out in the midst, in a single strike. We are the master of territories and we have overcome. So the plan worked. The long range, long wearing, patient, let's just be patient, our day is coming, plan worked. And that is what will cause America to go into a pit of confusion. It's bad enough to just hear on the news that there's a war or see on TV that there's a war, but then to see your neighbor Fran and her husband Dylan in the war will bring Deep confusion and the melting of hearts. The Lord went on. The foreigners will come out of hiding. Beware, Chaldea. You are overcome from within. Without a single blow struck or weapon raised, you have been conquered. And now the proof will ma manifest that you have passengers among you waiting to show themselves. This is Yah's word. Conquering, they went forth to conquer. And Chaldea bowed low before her enemies and went into servitude to a land she did not know. And every time you hear bowed low before the conquerors, bowed low before the enemies and went to serve in a land that she did not know, this is the punishment of slavery upon this nation that the Lord has been speaking of to this servant since 2019, that there will be, we will see slavery again in the modern age, that it will not just be that slavery that everybody looked at and was bored with that was taking place in Libya, 
because it was Africans and they were like, well, you know, if they went to swim across the people's borders and they're being auctioned off now, that is just consequences. No, this will be a, this will be a well thought out, well planned out trade. This will be business. People will be trading in people. I have not yet finished the prophecies that I have received that God says we will see the auction block again in the United States because people and their children will be on those auction blocks being sold off as the punishment for a sinful and rebellious nation. Went to serve in a land she did not know means being taken to places like the original slaves left Africa and they did not know where they were going and they had no control over where they were going. God says he will take the people of the United States to the border of their lands, judge them there, and cross them over to foreign territories. And so this is the word that I have received, April 16, 2023, the glory of the Chaldeans, where God is talking about the fall of a great hegemon. A hegemon is a nation that excels in so much power in all aspects and spheres that it sits across the world like a very massive statue. And God says that the height, the glory of that pride will be cut down and heaven will be a witness, but heaven will not be able to bear the way that it happens and the sky will hide its face. The sky will not want to gaze upon what the father will bring here, do here of his own volition. And so if you have heard this word and you are an old subscriber, especially, and you have been hearing this word for the entire time that I have been sowing and tithing my life here, then you know that this word is consistent with everything that has been written on the master's voice, www, the master's voice, I mean, www.the-masters-voice.com. I am working my way faithfully through the material that I have received from the Holy Spirit. I will do my best to finish it all. And what remains for the listener is to enter into heartfelt repentance. As I'm going through these prophecies to do with judgment for slavery and also judgment for sin and rebellion, one thing that I can offer by way of let me call it assistance, is that no matter what the crime is, if you cannot identify with a crime, you will never repent properly before God for it. And so if you know that you don't know what it is like to have your child taken from you and put in the care of someone else, and the child is shipped off somewhere, then if you cannot identify with that or empathize with that, it is not likely that you are going to see fruit in your repentance. And so this is just something to think about. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. I apologize that it's gotten dark, but sometimes I just have to power through and finish what is before me and not worry about aesthetics or worry about how things look or worry about my surroundings or if it's noisy outside. There are factors that I can control and factors that I can't control. One thing I can control is my own human spirit. Another thing that I can control is when I am doing this work, I am focused on and committed to this work and I will do it either until it's all finished, even though it is such a huge mountain, or the Lord will say, you have done enough and then I will stop. I'm Celestial and this is the master's voice. Thank you to all of you who are support to this channel and this blog. God bless you. God, multiply the fruits of what you hear so that it enters into your spirit and is useful to you and your family. Until I see you again, goodbye.